Hello, today we're doing 3.4 notes, parallel lines, and angle relationships. So let's start with parallel lines. If two lines are parallel, then they are straight and do not intersect. So parallel lines, they are straight and they will never cross one another. All right, so a transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines. So this is our transversal here. Um, it's marked with a T for transversal, and it goes through both of my parallel lines like so. Okay, if two angles are corresponding angles, then they are in the same position for each point of intersection of a line and the transversal. So if we take a look at one, five is in the same exact position on the other line. So one and five would be corresponding angles. We also have three and seven, two and six, and four and eight. All right, now I want to take I want you to take a second and do the exploration um, and play around with it a little bit and then fill out what do you notice make a conjecture. All right. So hopefully we have come to the conclusion that pretty much no matter how you move it, um, the angle is going to be the same. So angle is the same. So corresponding angle theorem, if parallel lines, so that stands for parallel if I use it again later, if parallel lines, then corresponding angles are congruent. And the symbol for congruent is an equal sign with the squiggle on top. So that means if we take our um, corresponding angles, so one and five, that means one is congruent to 5, 3 is congruent to 7, 2 is congruent to 6, and 4 is congruent to 8. All right, let's go ahead and go down to the next page. So we want to um, name every single angle. So if we start with the corresponding angle, because we just learned that, so this angle and this angle are corresponding angles. So that means this has to be 110 degrees. Well now we have to apply other things we know. So we have to remember vertical angles. Vertical angles. And these are congruent. These are congruent. So that means my vertical angle here and my vertical angle here are each 110 degrees. Okay, now I'm going to highlight this part right here. That is a straight line, and straight lines are 180 degrees. So we will have a pair of linear angles, which we learned before as well. So these are supplementary. So add up to 180. All right, so if these two angles right here are supplementary angles that add up to 180, I'm going to do 180 minus 110, so we get 70. All right, now, once again, I can apply my vertical ang or my corresponding angles. So I have an angle here and an angle there, so that's 70 degrees. And then I can apply my vertical angle again. So I have vertical angles there and there. So 70 degrees. So a couple things to notice. Um, the top set of angles and the bottom set of angles, they are all the same in the same position and all that stuff. Um, as far as like the corresponding, that applies to the corresponding angles. And then also, we only have two different angle measures. And if you were to add those together, we should get 180. 
So with that in mind, go ahead and try example two. I'll give you a couple seconds to pause the video, then I'll move over. All right, so here's what we should have gotten using corresponding angles, vertical angles, and linear pairs. All right, let's take a look at example three. So here we just want to find the variable. So I want to identify what these angles are, and they're corresponding angles. They're in the same position on each, each side of my lines. So that means they are congruent. So 120 equals 4x divided by 4. 30 equals x. All right, let's go ahead and try that with number four. So number four, these are also corresponding angles. They're on the same side um, of the parallel lines as well as the transversal. So that means they are congruent to one another. So 2x minus 40 is equal to x plus 10. Go ahead and subtract my x. x minus 40 equals 10. Add my 40. x equals 50. All right, I want you to go ahead and try 5 and 6. I'll give you a second to pause. All right, hopefully you tried those out. Here is 5 and 6. If you have any questions, make sure you're asking your teacher. Pause the video to see the solutions as needed. Okay, next we have alternate interior angles. So if two angles are alternate interior angles, then they are non-adjacent interior angles that lie on different sides of the transversal T. If so the alternate interior angle theorem, if parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So interior, that means on the inside of my parallel lines, and then alternate, so you kind of think of alternate back and forth. You can think about that here as well. They're on separate sides, kind of like if you're going back and forth, taking steps across that line. So three and six, three is congruent to six, and five is congruent to four. All right, let's go ahead and try a couple. So these two are alternate interior, so that means they have to be equal. The nice thing with number seven, we didn't have to solve for anything. We just had to set them equal. All right, and then eight, once again, we have alternate interior. It makes sense, because that's what we're working with. Um, but it's good to be able to recognize what it is. So alternate interior angles are congruent, so I'm going to have 2x minus 40 equals x plus 10. So I'll go ahead and subtract my x. Now I have x minus 40 equals 10. I'll go ahead and add 40 to both sides. x equals 50. All right, I want you to go ahead and try 9 and 10 with those alternate interior angles. Alrighty, hopefully you gave those a shot. Here are the solutions for 9 and 10. Make sure to pause, check them out if needed. Alright, let's go to the next page. So, consecutive interior angles. So, if two angles are consecutive interior angles, then they are interior angles that lie on the same side of the transversal T. If we have parallel lines, then consecutive interior angles are supplementary. And let's remember they add up to 180. Okay, so once again, interior angles inside my parallel lines. And then they have to be on the same side because they're consecutive. So they're one right after the other. So that means angle three, plus angle 5 equals 180 degrees. And then same thing on the other side, angle 4 plus angle 6 equals 180 degrees. All right, I want to take a look at number 12, and we'll go back up to number 11. So since we have consecutive angles, I know that they're not the same. That's why I added the extra line on the bottom one. But I do know that they're supplementary. So 113 plus x equals 180. <clears throat> Subtract 113. 
x equals 67. Alright, I just wanted to see, show you an example before we do number 11 because it's not an example specifically of solving consecutive angles. Alright, so take a look at a, b, and c and I want you to see if you can identify each pair of angles as alternate interior corresponding or consecutive interior. I'll give you a second to try that out and then we'll talk about it. Alright, so a is corresponding so they're on the same side of the transversal um, on the same on the top of each of our in lines going left and right but on the top where the transversal meets so corresponding B it's on the inside so it has to be interior we haven't talked about exterior yet but it's on the interior and they're on the same side so they have to be consecutive interior and then that leaves us with C they're on the inside of my parallel lines and they're across from one another so they're alternate interior. Alright, okay let's go ahead and take a look at 13. So 13 we have to start to find different things. So the first thing we learned today was corresponding angles, right? So we're going to start with that. So we have corresponding angles there. So we have 5x minus 5 equals y. Well, we can't solve anything because we have an x and a y. So what else have we learned? We've learned alternate interior. Well we have no alternate interior. Well we also learned consecutive interior and these two angles are consecutive. Consecutive, They're right in order. So that means 5x minus 5 plus 135 should equal 180. Alright, we can solve this one because we only have x. So 5x plus 130 equals 180, subtract 130, 5x equals 50, so x equals 10. Alright, now that we know x, I am able to plug that in here to solve for my y. So let's go ahead, so now I have 5 times 10 minus 5 equals y. So 50 minus 5 equals y, 45 equals y. Y. Beautiful. Alright, let's go ahead and do our last one. So number 14. Okay, before we do number 14, I want you to try and see if you can identify some angles. We're going to be using some vertical angles. See if you can figure those ones out. Okay, hopefully I had a chance to pause the video. So I have vertical angles here and here. I figured I'd go ahead and start with that. And then I also have a set of consecutive angles. So I know Z equals 100. And then I also have Y equals 2X plus 40. Well, I can't do anything with that because I have a Y and an X. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my Y and my Z. So Y plus Z should equal 180 because they are consecutive angles. So y plus 100 equals 180. So y equals 80. Alright, then I can use that to plug that in for y and I can then solve my x. So I have 80 equals 2x plus 40. Subtract 40, I get 40 equals 2x divided by 2, 20 equals x. Alright, so there's the end of 3.4. If you have any further questions, make sure you're asking your teacher. Have a great day.